What if I told you one of the hottest new GLP-1 medications that is making its way to market isn't from the US, but instead is coming right from China? Meet Mazdutide. This is a dual agonist injectable medication that is born and raised in China, and it is throwing some heavyweight punches with a GLP-1 and glucagon agonist activity. And it ain't no Wagovi wannabe, it is a global contender that is showing some pretty impressive results. And so today we're diving into the GLORY-1 trial. This is a phase three Chinese-led randomized placebo-controlled trial that demonstrates the effects and benefits of Mazdutide. We're breaking down what the trial results actually showed, as well as how much weight people actually lost and why it maybe looks like there's a little bit less weight loss than what we usually see. And we're gonna talk about whether this is gonna be China's next blockbuster export or just a regional flex with global buzz. Oh, and before we drop this spicy science bomb, don't forget to smash that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all the data-driven drama. All right, let's get into it. As a quick aside, did you know that keeping your Wagovi and Zepbound pens at the optimal temperature while traveling isn't optional, it is essential? And that is because these medications are very temperature sensitive. If they get too hot or too cold, that's gonna cause the drug to degrade and ultimately become ineffective. And that is why I recommend the For All Families Travel Coolers. Two of my favorite models are first the Voyager, which is a little bit larger, it can hold multiple pens, and it can provide continuous refrigeration via USB power or with a biogel pack. My second favorite is the Nomad Cooler, which can keep your medications good and cool for a period of 28 to 30 hours, making it excellent for those weekend trips. And because you're one of my amazing viewers, you can use my code DANB10 and get 10% off your order at ForAllFamily.com. Again, that's DANB10 at ForAllFamily.com. The link and everything that you need are down below in the description, so travel with peace of mind and don't risk your medications. All right, let's dive into the mechanism of action of Mazdutide. And this drug is a dual receptor agonist, so it acts at both the GLP-1 receptors and the glucagon receptors. And what we know about GLP-1 is that it helps to slow down gastric emptying, or how quickly food goes from your stomach to your small intestine. It helps to reduce your cravings and food-seeking behaviors, and it also is extremely effective at regulating your blood sugars. Whereas glucagon can act synergistically with GLP-1 and crank up thermogenesis, fat oxidation, so it's gonna help you to increase your metabolic rate and the breakdown of your fat cells. Basically, it's kinda like a therapist and a personal trainer packed into one single injectable pen. Now, the GLORY-1 trial was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. The study included 610 individuals that were split into three groups, either getting Mazdutide 4 milligrams, Mazdutide 6 milligrams, or a placebo injection. And they were then followed for a period of 48 weeks. All of the participants were Chinese adults that had an average BMI of about 31.1 and an average starting weight of about 87 kilos. Now, I do wanna make a quick point here in that the BMI and the weight that people started out at was lower than what we traditionally see with say the Zepbound and Wagovi trials. The average BMI and average weight that started out in those trials was about 105 kilos and a BMI of about 38. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, the overweight and obesity category BMI BMI cutoffs in China are different in comparison to North America. In China, overweight is considered to be a BMI of 24 to 27.9, and you're considered to have obesity in China if your BMI is greater than or equal to 28. Now, this change isn't just a cultural quirk. It's based on data because Asian populations tend to hold more visceral fat at lower BMIs. And so the BMI cutoffs get adjusted downwards because that visceral fat, that is the dangerous fat that we're worried about. And so the BMI categories are adjusted to account for that greater amount of visceral fat because it ultimately means you're at a higher risk of metabolic conditions. Now, another big point here is that if you're starting at a lower weight and a lower BMI, that also means you're likely going to lose less weight over the course of a trial. And so that may certainly affect the results that we're about to talk about. All right, let's talk about the results. 
As you can see in this lovely graph right here, we have all three groups lined up, and at week 32, the placebo group lost 0.5% from their baseline weight, the mass dutide 4 milligram group lost 10% from their baseline weight, and the 6 milligram group lost 12.6% of their baseline weight. Now, the primary outcome of this trial was the amount of weight lost at week 32 but they did continue the trial out to week 48, and as you can see there, the six milligram mass dutide group went on to lose about 14% of their baseline weight over the 48 week period, which overall is pretty darn solid for a population that started at a lower BMI and lower starting weight. But one thing that I wanna highlight here is that something weird happened between week 32 to week 48. Between week 32 and week 40, you can see that the weight loss actually flatlined, and then beyond week 40, suddenly we got another big drop in weight. Now, why exactly this happened isn't entirely clear. There's multiple different ideas that we could look at, and the authors unfortunately didn't really address this point, which is a little bit disappointing. So a few of the theories are one, the homeostatic adaptation or biology is basically kicking in and saying, cool, I don't want you to lose any more weight, so we're gonna make you plateau and hang out at this weight now, because that's all I'm gonna let you lose. There could have been a bit of a behavioral drag in that participants were losing motivation, they reached that 32 week, which was the main outcome that they were looking for. Then between week 32 and 40, there was kind of that behavioral, eh, who cares? And suddenly they got more motivation at beyond week 40 to week 48. Or there could have been maybe this visceral fat lag, because when we looked at the MRI and DEXA scan data, what we found is that the participants were actually still losing fat mass during that period but the number on the scale wasn't reflecting a downward trend. Bottom line is, GLP-1s, biology, well, they're never gonna act in a perfectly linear downward fashion. And if you haven't figured this out yet, weight loss is never going to be a nice downward graph. It's always going to be up, down, plateau, all over the place and doing wild and crazy things because that is just what biology does and that is what things do when you can't control them. Now, as a quick break here, if you're wondering which GLP medications are what, what do they do, what is the rate of weight loss, what are the side effects, expectations, and so on, then you're in luck because I've put together a super clean, no fluff, one page hound out that breaks down all the big names in the weight management space, including Ozempic, Wagovi, Zepbound, Maugero, you name it, if it's a GLP-1 medication that people are talking about, I have put it in this handout. And best of all, it's free, evidence-based, and yes, it's actually easy to read. Just head down below to the description, click on the link, enter your email address, and I will send it directly to your inbox because you deserve real answers, not more confusion. Now, given that there's some differences in starting weight and BMI and even the population that was used in this study, I wanted to get a proper comparison to another drug like tirzepatide in order to get an accurate idea of what is happening and how does masdutide compare. And so I was able to find another study that took Zepbound and used it in a Chinese population. And what they found is that the weight loss from baseline with Zepbound 15 milligrams was about 17.5 percent from baseline, which is a little bit less than what we saw in the Surmount 1 trial with more of a North American population with an average weight loss of about 21 percent. And so when we compare Zepbound 15 milligrams in a Chinese population, 17.5 percent, compared to that Maz Dutide 6 milligrams, which we got about a 14 percent loss from baseline over a 48 week period. So it does look like, at least compared to the 6 milligram dose, Zepbound is still the king of the hill, but there is a dose of masdutide 9 milligrams that is currently making its way through various trials and early data is showing an average weight loss of about 17 to 18% from baseline. So Zepbound may actually meet its match or at least have a very comparable competitor. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the limitations of the Glory 1 trial, and there was a few things that I noted and a few things that I wished hadn't occurred, but nonetheless, let's chat about them and see what they mean for the results. So a few obvious ones is that this study was only in Chinese adults, so that limits the global generalizability, and we can't really say, are we gonna get the same effects or different effects in terms of a North American population? Likely we're gonna see some differences overall though. There was that weird plateau thing that happened between weeks 32 and 40. 
But my main sticking point for this study was that the placebo group lost barely any weight. At week 32, they had only lost 0.5% of their baseline weight, and at week 48, they actually had gained weight, and they had only lost, in total, 0.3% of their baseline weight. Now, this is a bit of a problem, because in most GLP-1 placebo-based trials, the placebo group loses anywhere from 2 to 4% of their baseline weight. So why was there such a low amount of weight loss? Well, there could have been an issue with the lifestyle advice and support that was given. What the author said was that it was standard lifestyle advice, so maybe it wasn't as structured as what it should have been, maybe it wasn't as direct in terms of you gotta reach this amount of calories and do this amount of activity. There could have certainly been a cultural aspect in terms of you know maybe less tracking of calories and so on and so forth. But ultimately, the big question is, does this data or this issue undermine the results of the study? Well, it's not a fatal flaw, but it definitely can affect the results that we saw with Masdutide in comparison to the placebo, and makes it even harder to do comparison across trials and that sort of thing if we don't really know kind of what the issue and problem was going on with the lifestyle advice that was given. Now, jumping to the safety aspect, there was no big red flags that came out from a safety perspective, side effect perspective, and so on. We got the usual GI side effects that were mild to moderate in nature and pretty par for the course that we know about the GLP-1 based medications at this time. There was a bit of an increase in heart rate of about 4.6 beats per minute, but no funky arrhythmias or anything from that perspective. And overall, from a safety perspective, everything is pretty much aligning with what we would expect with a GLP-1 and glucagon dual receptor agonist drug. And hey, if you're currently living with obesity or another chronic disease and you're on one of the medications for managing those chronic disease and you happen to be one of my Canadian viewers, well, I might have something for you. There's an app called Blue Charm that is rewarding Canadians with chronic conditions and on a variety of different chronic medications. You just download the app, complete a quick survey, and you're gonna get sent anywhere from 50 to $100 as a thank you via an e-transfer. And if you use my code LYG4G8, you're gonna get an additional $5 for sharing your story. So you could get paid anywhere from $55 to $105 for about 30 minutes of your time. And not only that, sharing your story helps to drive meaningful research around medications and the care that people are providing to people with chronic diseases. So, if you're Canadian, above the age of 18, and have one of these chronic conditions and happen to be on one of the medications that are used to treat it, check out Blue Charm today and start earning for sharing your story. Now, one thing that a lot of you may be wondering is why is this study and data and stuff like that all taking place in China? Well, first and foremost, the developers in event of this medication is a Chinese biotechnology company, but they are co-developing Masdutide with Eli Lilly. As well, China currently has one of the fastest growing obesity markets in the world. And so, Innovent is bringing the home court advantage and Eli Lilly is gonna be there for eventual global dominance and the distribution of the drug across the globe. So while yes, this is definitely about helping people, it is also a pharma power play in order to get a larger market share on that global perspective. All right, I'll get off my soapbox now and let's bring this one into land. So overall, Masdutide looks like another pretty exciting GLP-1 medication that is making its way to market. It is definitely a strong contender and showing some really great results. Overall, this Glory 1 trial was pretty well done. It had a good effect size and everything in that perspective, and there was no major red flags other than the few limitations that I pointed out. And if the data with the nine milligram dose continues to hold and we get more global trials, well, we could see a real contender for ZepBound and Wagovi. Now I wanna hear from you. Would you take this medication? What are your thoughts? Was this study well done? Let me know down in the comments. Let's have a bit of a discussion. And if you're ready to stop second guessing and start owning your journey, then you need to sign up for my Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub. This is your go-to resource for expert insights, live check-ins, and a community that has been there there, they've done it and they simply get it and they're there to help you live your happiest and healthiest life. The links and everything that you need are all down below or you can check out the Mighty Networks app and type in Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub and we will come up and you can join and sign up today for free. Also, I know that you love this video so be sure to like it and share it with anybody else that you think might get some benefit. And of course, don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the content that I put out. As well, check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan. And as I always like to sign off, please remember, it is those small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks.